Mr. Ribble, you are recognized for five minutes. Uh, th <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Welcome back to the Budget Committee. It's good to be back to the Budget Committee, and uh, thank you, Ranking Member Yarma. Thank you, and members of the committee. I'm happy to be back here to improve how to discuss how we might improve our budget process to make Congress work better, smarter, and more efficiently. I was pleased to hear your opening comments uh, on bipartisanship, and I think I have an option for you. There, are, there are 237 members currently co-sponsoring biennial budgeting because the current budget process has simply not worked, and it's only gotten worse. Since the Congressional Budget Act was enacted in 1974, Congress has never passed both a budget resolution and all of its appropriation bills on time in the same year, not even once. It gets worse than election years. In the 40-year history of the current budget process, only one time has Congress enacted a budget resolution on time in an election year. That was 1976, just two years after the 74 Budget Act was signed into law. In fact, in the last 17 years, Congress has failed to even pass a budget in election years 77% of the time. Once again, in this very election year, with the House under Republican control, we have failed to produce a budget. I would assert that that is why 182 Republicans and 55 Democrats are supportive of biennial budgeting. That represents 54% of the Congress as a whole. 72% of Republicans and nearly one-third of Democrats. It's probably also why a bipartisan majority, 56% of this committee, as well as 54% of the Rules Committee, including Chairman Sessions, are co-sponsors on the bill. <clears throat> the bill is also co-sponsored by Speaker Ryan, Conference Chair McMorris Rogers, NRC NRCC Chair Walden, Conference Vice Chair Jenkins, Republican Policy Chair Messer. It has a majority of all committee chairmen and a majority of the 100 subcommittee chairmen, as well as support from across the entire ideological spectrum in the larger house. Given this level of support, Mr. Chairman, one must wonder if the most democratic body in the world, the People's House, still operates as a democracy. Because of Congress' failure to complete its work, we're forced to rely on continuing resolutions or omnibus appropriations bills that are hastily passed, usually without improvements to policy or programs, that come from effective oversight. This keeps us from doing the job we were sent here to do, and it's clear there's wide agreement that this must change. Given four decades of failure, let me explain why biennial budgeting should be part of the solution. First, biennial budgeting will provide greater certainty by moving budget decisions furthest away from election year politics, enhancing the likelihood of passing a budget and providing for a budget in an election year. Second, having a budget for two years will reduce the need for frequent stopgap measures like continuing resolutions. Third, moving to a biennial process would free up more time on the House floor to tackle mandatory spending, tax policy, and other essential work that the Congress must do. Fourth, not only will biennial budgeting tilt Congress' focus to oversight, it will also reduce the use it or lose it mentality that wastes precious taxpayer dollars at the end of every fiscal year. Nearly 20% of all spending occurs in the last few weeks of the year, and nearly a $35 billion increase in spending occurs in average the last week. Interesting, interestingly, since I've been here, each time the system falls apart and leadership must cut a deal to keep government running, it's always a two-year agreement. This led to the Budget Control Act of 2011, the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2013, the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2015. Biennial budgeting is an idea whose time has come. The House is seeking to work its will with an overwhelming bipartisan majority. In fact, during the last Congress, this very committee passed this exact bill with your supporting vote, Mr. Chairman. Since I've been in the Congress, this was the only bill in six years that has passed out of the Budget Committee on recorded vote that had broad bipartisan support. And in fact, Mr. Chairman, every single member in attendance today has supported it. I'm eager, to, eager and ready to work with you on this bill as it moves forward. In light of Speaker Ryan's commitment to a bottom-up process, I would like to know, Mr. Chairman, what your intentions are about this broadly supported bill. Will you move to a markup and bring this bill to the floor? And with that, I yield back. I thank the gentleman for his work. He's done yeoman's uh, uh, work on this and obviously talked, uh, I suspect, with every member of the House. I don't know. You've certainly gotten uh, a, a, Pretty sure. a significant majority. <laughs> uh, as the, the conversations that you've, you and I have had on, on multiple occasions, as you know, the two concerns that I've had are uh, uh, making certain that we're not losing the ability to do reconciliation uh, on an annual basis. And then, as I just mentioned to Mr. Yarmouth, the, um, the, the concern about defaulting to a two-year CR instead of a one-year CR, which I think would be 
problematic for many of the agencies. So, but I look forward to continuing to work with you, and, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll see clear. I would also um, ask you to provide, if you would, for the uh, committee, um, any perspective on Senator Enzi's proposal in the Senate on, yes, sir. on a on kind of a hybrid of, of a biennial budget? I'd be happy to do that, sir. Thank you. Look forward to that. Thank you so much. Appreciate your work.